Hey Dylan, um, so we're here at the Ableton booth, uh, we've got a very nice, well, the, the swanky room. It's, it's with a the party over here. Yeah, yeah. It's a party. Um, so CV tools, all brand new stuff from you guys. Yep. Tell us right. about it. Sure. So CV tools is a pack of devices for uh, Live 10. Uh, they work with DC coupled audio interfaces and modular synthesizers or other CV compatible gear. This is my own rig, but it works with lots of different stuff. Um, so, it's a pack. It shows up in your browser here. Uh, if I go to the, sorry, I'll just get there, packs. And then you've got, I'll get rid of my arpeggiator search. In your packs list, CV tools. There's three instruments. The CV instrument itself, a rhythm generator and a trigger generator. There's a collection of modulation devices that uh, take either spit signal out to the modular or really cool is that they take signal read in. in yeah. uh, so you can modulate things in live from the modular. Uh, and then a few simple things like a utility and a clock input and output. The clock is where I'll start because that's kind of the most fundamental thing. You've got this cool modular and you've got live and you want to put them together. Yeah. First thing you need to do is get them in time. So this simple device here is the clock output. This outputs a variety of different uh, clock pulses. You can choose the speed. It has a clock output and it has a transport reset output if you've got a sequencer that resets itself. Ah, so you can always start the so sequencer. So you can always, yeah, right. yeah. My rig, I'm using a Moog DFAM, which doesn't have a reset, so I'm not using that particular feature. But what's going to happen is I'm going to hit play. And the sequencer here on my DFAM is playing along perfectly clocked to live. Yeah, which is what you want, right? The nice th that's the simplest thing. The nice thing about it is because we're doing this all, um, uh, because it's uh, audio, all of this control is at audio rate. It's very high resolution, no jitter, uh, very low latency, just really rock solid. Um, so I'm using a, a RME Babyface Pro, and then coming out of that via the ADAT outputs, I'm using a couple of these Expert Sleepers modules. Yeah, I like being able to sort of run a couple of cables over to my studio and just plug the whole modular in. But there's a variety of interfaces that will work. Um, for clock, actually, most audio interfaces work. When you get into the more complicated stuff like modulation and thing, you really need the DC coupled outputs yeah. to, to get that to work properly. So, that's clock. Pretty simple. I've got my beat rolling now. Next thing we're going to look at is the CV instrument. And this is kind of the heart of being able to play and sequence uh, your modular from live. So this live. Is essentially gives you everything for a voice, I guess, right? Yeah, for a voice. So it's got your pitch, uh, pitch and gate here that you can see. Uh, and then it brings the audio input back into the computer. So it's kind of like, acts almost like a plug-in for your modular. Ah, so does it work with uh, CV scaling as well? So you, you, you can actually, can you scale the CV? Because quite often it's a bit wonky, That's isn't it? That's probably the best. So why don't I show you that first? I'm going to stop the stop my uh, drum beat there. So I've already calibrated this, but there's a calibration routine in here. I'm going to put, this is the simple way to use the instrument. If you pop it open, there's actually a whole lot more inside. Envelopes. Uh, expression, MIDI control, a drawable LFO. It's really deep, actually. And it even acts as a, can act as a VCA on its own. So you can, just with an oscillator, you can make a whole voice with this thing. But the calibration is pretty important. So uh, wonky analog oscillators is cool if that's what you want, and super annoying if it's not what you want. So this calibration routine uh, lets me plug my oscillator into the input, which I've already done. And then um, just scan it and, and measure. Then, yeah, I'll show you, you if you like. You and then I run the pitch out. Uh, and then it's going to ask me to... find my C3 tuning. So I set my initial pitch. Oh, hang on, let me plug into... a more easily tunable... Alright, so you're going triangle. Am I not getting... sorry, there you go. Uh, and then I run the calibration routine like this. So I go next, and it's gonna. So can it fix quite? Because some stuff does, just doesn't have the range. It starts to tail off. It does both. It does, so, so it can fix that. Yeah. So the expert sleepers stuff I'm using has a full plus minus 10 volt output range. 
but if you're using a, a DC coupled interface that's not designed for modular, like the Universal Audio Apollos are mostly DC coupled, the Motu interfaces, headphone sockets on RMEs, stuff like that. So in my oscillator, you can see that oscillator doesn't tune perfectly in the top range. It just gives you a kind of a, but it's a showing correction me it's given voltage. me nine octaves of correct tuning, which, which is w insane. Which is about Four, four more than you probably get off any anything. Yeah, so in analog. my case, it's calibrated the oscillator. If you have a rig where the um, sound card's not perfect, it will also compensate for that, and it'll give you a range that your system's able to support. Will it tune filters as well? In theory, if you get a self-oscillating filter and you can get it to output a pitch, it could do. Yeah, okay. I guess so. Neat. I mean, the calibration is quite an important for Yeah. Uh, just one quick question, because for some reason, I thought this was all done in Max. It's not. It's native to... No, it's Max. Oh, it is Max, right, okay. Right. Uh, so these are Max for Live devices, um, but we spend a lot of work making them feel really easy to use. Yeah, they look very similar to the... A lot of my, Max is always, or not always, but for a long time, Max has had lots of cool CV stuff. It was just a bit, uh, you had to get over a hurdle to get into it. So yeah. this was about making it a bit simpler. So now with Sweet, Max is sort of... It's basically, it's more like hook. it's built in now. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it just feels like using all the other Live devices. So I'll quickly show you a couple of other things. Um, the pack itself is really deep. So the CV input, uh, I'm going to drop this into the track here. Um, I will run my rig and I'm going to plug. I've got a Turing machine here, which is like a cool random voltage generator. Oh, so Sorry for my it, messy patch cabling here. Uh, look, it's, it's part of the job. It's part, yeah. So this thing spits out random CV. I'm going to listen to the fourth input where it's plugged in. That voltage there is coming from the modular. So it's, rec and it's recording that? It's not recording, but uh, what I, I mean, I could record it, but what I'm going to do with it is um, attach it to uh, like a effect scene, for example. So I'm going to map it like this, and then I can uh, quickly click on my effect scene up here on the track. And now that um, it's up in here, that Turing machine is modulating my... Nice. Turn my arpeggiator back on it, but you can do all sorts of stuff with it. So I could put like uh, any live effect now on my modular, like a chorus. I'll map my map this to the feedback of the chorus, and now I'm going to get steppy sort of modular control of my effect in live. That's really sweet, actually. I mean, that's that's the stuff that really opens things out. And so you can record CV voltage clips if you've got a DC as well, and then, yeah, and then affect those, The right? nice thing about this whole system is that the gates, triggers, uh, pitch, modulation, whatever, it's just audio. So if you want to record it, you can record it. You can have clips of the stuff stacked up. As long as you've got a DC coupled interface. As long as you've got a it. DC coupled interface, then you can just treat it like audio. Um, there's a few other really nice things that the pack does. Uh, so. That was the input. Um, it also is really good for output. So the obvious example would be like an LFO. So we have an LFO that you can output into your modulator as a uh, sorry into your modular as a modulation source. We have a drawable LFO called Shaper. These are both very familiar to people that have used the ones in Suite, but these also output um, uh, control voltage. This really, this one, CV utility is maybe a bit, not mysterious, but it can be a bit hard to grok what it does until you use it. I've not heard that word for a while. Grok, I like yeah, that. Yeah, okay, maybe, maybe it's good. a New Zealand thing. No, so, no, I've heard it before. Uh, so this is going to, hang on, where's my, yeah, so this combines the signals from these modulators. So I can um, take my, and a few, yeah, so this is now combining this shaper output here, this one, is being mixed with the LFO. Right. And then I can output that either as a control voltage to my modular. So it's actually replacing a lot of utility modules, isn't oh, it? Oh, you can do it. There's a lot of, there's so many ways to combine it. It's so you could, you could if you were really kind of, uh, you, you could just limit your, your uh, modular system to VCOs and VCFs and processors and have all the yeah, control voltage I mean, coming from elsewhere. I think it depends. What, you, you can do it so many different ways, but this for me does let me generate these complex things. I still like having a bunch of stuff in my system for the hands-on control. Sure. So the kind of the point is that you can use the plugins and the computer for what it's good for, but still make sure you get the stuff that you want under your hands, under your hands. I and it's interesting also because it, it starts to kind of introduce the concept of recallability for modular patching as well to a degree. I basically, the way I use it, I don't touch the computer when I'm playing. So I use a launch control to do mixing. So I use all the mixing stuff in live on my modular. I've got six inputs here. So I do like a drum voice, a synth voice, uh, a noise percussion, and there's some stereo granularization and stuff. 
and I can kind of, and uh, live input for looping, then I do all the mixing and complicated stuff in live. If I had to build that rig in hardware, it would be pretty yeah. cumbersome. Well, mi mixers and modular have always been, they're, they're still, the holy grail hasn't been found oh, for that, has I it? I mean, I think the analog mixers are really nice, but for me, it just gives me all the effects and like the echoes and the reverbs exactly. and stuff that I'm used to using when I'm producing. So, uh, And I play those live, which I find really fun. So uh, this, this is... Uh, is it a free update or is it a paid thing? What's uh, the it's free as part of, it'll come out um, where 10.1 is in beta currently. Um, so that's got a whole lot of other new live features in it. Yeah, this is public, But once that's it? out, the CV Tools pack will come out around the same time. And it's going to be free if you own uh, Live Suite or if you have uh, stand, Live Standard and Max for Live. So it needs Max for Live to work. But I imagine for a lot of people, this could be a bit of a game changer as well, because it's oh, like, it well, okay, that if I hadn't chosen my door yet, this is probably what well, I'm going to go for, I mean, because of the CV stuff. The thing I find is that um, it just, I'm so familiar with live, and the flow is simple for me, and I find it a really cool way to combine these two things. I've been lucky enough to be using the prototypes for the last quite, quite some time, and it's changed the way I use the modular. Like, I find it... I, I use both of them together and they just kind of fit together really easily and really fluidly. And I can kind of, I don't know, I just find it really changes the musicality of the modular. I can add a few simple things like looping, clip recording. You can apply Live's groove to clock outputs and triggers, all sorts of stuff like this. So you can get these grooving sequences or you can build. Uh, the one I really like is that we haven't shown you is Envelope Follower. Uh, this one is designed to take uh, an audio input uh, five, I'm going to load up a, let me load, I'm going to load an army and break. It's kind of some sort of sin, I think, but I'm going to do it anyway. I just want something that... So that's going to, um, that's now generating control voltage that I can output as an envelope into the modular. It's uh, generating triggers that I could use to clock something. Right, sweet. So I can take a human feel or a human drum thing or something I've recorded and drive the modular from that. Very nice. Um, there's quite a few ways to do it. Grooving MIDI clips and sequencing the modular is really fun. You build these like grooving clocks and stuff. So it's, I don't know, brings all the nice bits alive into the modular world. Oh, well, I'm sure everybody's going to be excited to get it soon. I know you've got another filming gig <laughs> just coming right up and I don't want to hold them up. Thank you no, very no, much. Very not much a problem. Dinner. Thanks very much.